Coming up on this edition of Mustang News, we take a look at what is happening to the prairie dogs in Kiwanis Park. Plus, we check in on Imagine Graduation. All this and more coming up. edition of Mustang News. I'm Avery Waite. And I'm Jessica Wollenberger. This weekend, reporter Jenna Horn sat in on a press conference given by the editor of the Dallas Morning News. The conference focused on the damaged relationship between the news media and its audience. Here's more on the story. Mike Wilson, editor of the Dallas Morning News, gave a press conference on Thursday, March 22nd. Wilson spoke to a room full of aspiring journalists about what he believes to be a crisis in our country. Well, the days of inherent trust are gone now. It's a different world. And, and this is where I see a crisis, not just for the Dallas Morning News, but for all conscientious news media organizations and for our country. According to Wilson, the trust the American people once held in government institutions, universities, and news media is no longer there, and that partisan and fake news have led to the deterioration of that trust. Our Lady of the Lake journalism major Chloe Brown suggests honesty as a step towards rebuilding that trust. I think the important thing is to be honest, especially if we do make mistakes, to be honest about what we're doing wrong and what we can do to improve. Ryan Barrett, Baylor film and media major, says that above all else, journalists should strive towards being accurate. Provide accurate, up-to-date information based on whatever they're covering, it's a beat, it's a, you know, a photo assignment, whatever. Wilson provided similar suggestions, stating that journalists should own up to their errors, stay accurate, and remind people of all the problems that journalism has solved. This has been contestant 346 reporting for TIPA. Off Southwest Parkway lies a tiny prairie dog town that makes Kiwanis Park the little tourist attraction people of Wichita Falls know it to be. Recently, however, the prairie dog town took a massive hit when the city workers tasked with renovating the enclosure didn't relocate the animals before bringing in earth-moving machines. As a result, what were dozens of prairie dogs inside the enclosure at Kiwanis Park became no more than 10 when the heavy machinery caved in their dens and crushed their tunnels. Founder of Reptile Rescue Wildlife, Michael Camella, came upon the scene Wednesday, February 28th, when he came to feed the prairie dogs as he usually does. They are trying to uh, better this enclosure, expand it, um, make improvements. That's not a point of contention I have with them, the, 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 the work. Is that they proceeded with the work without taking um, humane steps to attempt to capture and relocate the animals that were in here that could be harmed by the construction machinery. Camilla has regularly been feeding the prairie dogs since the drought began in 2009. He says the city complains about the prairie dogs that have escaped the enclosure, fearing they will dig up surrounding aspects of the park, such as the baseball diamond or the nearby Lakeview Cemetery. Dogs, you know, traditionally they live on prairies. They, they're not going to see one of the residents' backyards around here really as a prime habitat because they, prairie dogs like to be able to see around 360. Camilla says now the prairie dogs should be relocated. He proposed a plan to the mayor for extracting the dogs from their burrows, trapping them, and relocating them to an 80-acre farm a city resident offered them. Camilla says if the city agrees this plan, all he needs are boots on the ground to help the trap the animals. As the end of the semester gets closer, MSU is helping seniors prepare for graduation. Reporter Emily Simmons caught up with some of these students taking advantages of the services provided at Imagine Graduation. With graduation fast approaching, seniors are preparing to walk the stage in May. Imagine Graduation provides students with a one-stop shop for all their graduation needs. Students can purchase their cap and gown, class ring, graduation announcements and invitations, and even clear up any financial holds on their record. Business office teller Molly Williams helped seniors with any questions they had about their financial standing with MSU. Um, definitely want to set up your, settle up your bill. Um, you can walk across the stage, but you will be missing that diploma or transcript um, after you walk if your bill is not resolved. 
Um, so definitely have that taken care of and you will be good. Students could also talk with representatives from MSU's Alumni Relations, Graduate School, and Career Management Center. Free professional headshots were also provided for students looking for career opportunities after graduation. Nursing senior Rebecca Anna appreciated the services being provided for graduates. The most beneficial, I think, is like double checking that you have everything done because there may be some things that you need to get done before you graduate that you don't even know. Like, I have a a library debt or something and I need it to be covered or stuff like that. And so it's this checklist kind of it's fun. It helps. Imagine graduation is offered each semester so seniors can feel as prepared as possible for graduation. Information and details about the ceremony itself was also provided. Mass Communication senior Taylor Warren is ready for her graduation in May. I am so excited to graduate and to get to experience um, all the excitement that goes along with this. Um, <laughs> and just feel like all the hard work I've been to um, the curriculum is like finally being paid off. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Graduation will be held on May 12th at 10 a.m. at Wichita Falls K. Yeager Coliseum and is open to the public. For MNG Media, I'm Emily Simmons. Two weeks ago, I attended the A Day to Remember 15 Years in the Making concert tour. I thought it would be interesting to vlog one of the concerts I go to so everyone else could experience the chaos like I did. So much chaos, in fact, that I actually broke my camera inside of a mosh pit. Here's a look at what went on. Headed to a concert today. I'm actually headed to A Day to Remember, Papa Roach, and Falling in Reverse. Um, all some of my favorite bands, majority of my favorite bands out of this whole group is a day to remember though. All right, we made it to the venue. Traffic was Barely. awful, terrible. Horrendous. Just almost had to pay $20 for parking, but I said no sir, and turned around and just parked on the street. We hope we don't get towed, just I like every other really concert. I really hope I don't get towed, but that happens concert. every concert. That always happens. And then on the way back, we always get lost. So we'll see how this goes. But I'm excited. I'm pumped. A day to remember. It's going to be lit. Rock out. Rock out. <laughs> MNG reporter Reggie Johnson visited the annual Business Etiquette Dinner put on by the Dillard College of Business. Here's more on the story. The Dillard College of Business hosted an etiquette dinner on February 28th in Community Suites. Participating students had dinner with local employers who sponsored the event. We wanted to provide an opportunity for our students to gain a sense of confidence and comfort with these type of situations so they can excel in an interview, luncheon or dinner. UT graduate and etiquette consultant Janice Buss gave students a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to engage in a professional environment. From taking a seat to napkin placement and proper utensil use, students learned all the ins and outs of a formal dinner. One of the things that is so important is if you're comfortable with the way you're eating then you can focus on your interactions and the things you want to say that need to be said and so this is to help you learn how to use that fork, how to use that spoon. Over 100 students made a $10 deposit which was refunded after the dinner. Thanks to contributors like Advantage Real Estate, Patterson Auto Group, and United Regional students were able to practice in a professional environment for the first time. The business is the business etiquette dinner was actually an opportunity for me to learn things that I would need in the business world, things that actually would help me become a better person because at the end of the day you need grades but you also need your soft skills. All parties involved hope events like this will continue to flourish across campus. Over a hundred students participate, so the joint venture with the Dillard College of Business Administration has just opened up the opportunity for many, many students. And tonight, not only were there business students, but there were students in different disciplines. Yes, the event was a success. 
and I would like to see more events like this because it actually helps you grow not just as a student, but also as a professional. For m g Media, I'm Reginald Johnson. And she's going to get $10 back. Quidditch, Daddy. the sport made famous from the Harry Potter series, made its way to Wichita Falls this month. Isn't that right, Reggie? That's right, Jessica. The world of Harry Potter descended on Wichita Falls as teams from all over the nation competed in the 2018 Southwest Regional Championship. Sports team reporter Craig Tidmore has more on the story. The wizarding world of Harry Potter descended on Wichita Falls as teams competed in the 2018 U.S. Quidditch Southwest Regional Championship. Hoskins Field was transformed from a softball field to a Quidditch pitch where a total of 24 teams competed for the right to advance to the U.S. Quidditch Cup 11 in Round Rock, Texas on April 14th and 15th later this year. Quidditch, a sport that is born from the pages of Harry Potter, is brought to life by U.S. Quidditch, who has helped build the sport to its 11th season. The game of Quidditch is made up of two teams of seven players, with four of those players being from the same identifiable gender. The seven players are made up of three chasers, two beaters, one keeper, and one seeker. The game of Quidditch can seem too chaotic to those seeing it played for the first time. Uh, being able to just have to like not get narrow vision, it's, re it's very everything happens at once sport. So if, especially if you're watching from the outside or if you're playing the game, there's just a lot of stuff that you have to be able to pay attention to. And it's real easy to just lose track of things that you need to pay attention to. The chasers score the goals by either throwing or kicking the quaffle, which is a volleyball, into the rings, scoring 10 points for each successful score. The beaters use bludgers or dodgeballs to help disrupt other players. Any player that is hit with the bludger must drop any ball they are holding and return to their side, touching their goalpost before being able to re-enter play. The keeper guards a hoop from the opposing chasers, similar to a goalie would in soccer or hockey. The seeker is designated to catch the golden snitch. When the snitch is captured, the game ends and 30 points is awarded to the team. The catching the snitch too soon could end the game with your team still behind. The snitch is a neutral player that is dressed in yellow with a velcro tail attached to the shorts for the seekers to catch. The snitch enters play after the 18th minute begins and is to evade capture from each team's seeker. The game of Quidditch combines a combination of sports and is fun to play even if you don't have an athletic background. I've, I've known keepers, usually they're tall and like sturdy, and, but chasers are like light on their feet and then beaters, they have to like be able to jerk, but I mean, it doesn't really matter your athleticism because if you just go to practice, as long as you have the skills and the know-how of the game and you're just able to get to your position, you're gonna be able to play. You don't have to get there quick unless that's the play. For more information on the game of Quidditch or how to get your own team started, you can visit the U.S. Quidditch website at usquidditch.org. For Sports Scene, I'm Craig Tidmore. That's it for this edition of Mustang News. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at MNG Media and like us on Facebook. Be sure to tune in next time for your campus news.